Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. Another commitment for K-State football rolls in. It's another in-state get for the Wildcats, and it's a spot that they've had a lot of success over the last couple of years. Another Blue Valley addition to the roster, McGuire Richmond is uh, on board with K-State. You see the other P4 offer there was Iowa. There's some significance behind that. So, uh, Drew, I'll just let you immediately fire away on the addition of McGuire Richmond and uh, K-State being able to win out over Iowa. Yeah, it's a, it's a big recruiting win, even though you kind of see that his only P4 offer was Iowa along with K-State, but it's one where I mean, his brother has been a starting offensive lineman at Iowa for the past two years and is expected to be a starter again this year. So, I mean, I think that that's something that you really kind of look at and you're like, wow, that that's kind of like an under-the-radar recruiting win for K-State because when your brother is starting somewhere and they're recruiting you, I feel like that that kind of makes you a, a big time priority for the school, the other school. So I think that in that sense, it's a big time win. And I think that with how he plays and how he how he moves and how he looks, I think that this is a big time addition for K-State as well. I think that he plays really, really hard and with a lot of physicality. And what kind of really impressed me the most while watching him was how good he was when the ball was in the air and for a linebacker that's kind of a, a rare trait to have and that and especially at the high school level to be pretty good in coverage because i was really impressed and was uh kind of excited when i watched his film the first time of kind of seeing how he moved and how he looked in coverage but he he's that rear high school linebacker that has that on his tape which i really enjoy and he kind of he, and he just has a knack for making plays. And I think that that's something that is really important at the linebacker spot. And, and it's something that is kind of like a, a fun tool to have in the future because he's somebody that if you need an interception, he could be somebody that provides it. If you need a, just a pass deflection on a third down, he could be somebody that provides it. And he, and he just plays really, really hard and is really physical. So it, it's a fun film to watch. Now, with only the two P4 offers, he had some uh, group of five, like some American schools and and others. Is this more of one of those that K-State and Iowa, they see something there that others aren't seeing? Or is there also an element of, hey, K-State is kind of what the preference was, but also he has a brother that's a starter at Iowa. So it seems like those two schools would just be so far in front of everybody else. There's no reason for us to jump in. Yeah, I think that it would be more everybody kind of seemed to really realize that case eight and Iowa were in that top two and had been for a while. I mean, it, it was even not necessarily shocking to me that Iowa was uh, a school that ended up offering Richmond because there was a time where K-State was so far out in front. I wasn't sure if anybody else was going to end up offering him as well. So I think that it's a little bit of knowing that his brother is already at Iowa and really how far out in front K-State was for a little bit that it kind of scared some other teams off of like, a we don't want to not necessarily waste our time, but it would feel like not really using your resources correctly in that sense. So I think that it's it's a little bit of both, which is probably what I would I would think a lot of schools would say because Richmond is definitely a power four caliber player, but when you're a legacy at one school and the other school has been recruiting you probably the longest, it, it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for another team to really try and get involved. Yeah. And I mean, you, you can see some of the tape there, obviously impressive. You talked about showing some flashes in coverage as, as you know, a junior in high school linebacker. I also think that, you know, you can see in some of these just like how much more disciplined he is than some guys are on the high school football field. Like he knows his role and he's going to do it well. And uh, certainly this seems like one K-State was after for a long time. They got it done. Uh, in terms of what the projection would be once he gets to the next level, because we've talked a lot recently about the guys – that K-State has brought in, that they're listed as edge rushers, but they're probably going to play a certain spot as a linebacker at K-State. So this is more of a, you know, he's he's listed as a linebacker. How do you see that playing out for him in his role as a Wildcat? 
So right now, I think that the role would probably be for McGuire trying to play either that Will linebacker spot or the Sam. I think that that probably suits him the best. And I think that he can really excel in both of those spots as well uh, because he has the ability to play in coverage. He has the ability to play the run. So I wouldn't be surprised if the, the Sam is in, is where the, the spot that he ends up going to. And, and I think that that's kind of something that you're seeing with this class is that uh, Weston Polk is another guy that could play either the Sam or the Will, depending on how it goes with him and his body. And Mabari Richmond kind of the same way, where like Sawyer Shilke is probably going to be just a true Mike linebacker. So, I mean, we're sitting here and K State already has three linebacker commits, and it's been three guys that they've prioritized for a while. So, I think that that's it's been an impressive uh, little run on linebackers here. And K State still might take another, but I, I think that they could also just be content with the three that they have. Yeah, so that's what I was going to ask next: is what what do we see coming up? Then is it going to be another linebacker, or are they set now? They feel like they're filled out. I wouldn't be surprised if another linebacker is added because I think that there was kind of a a, a hint or like an inkling that they were going to end up taking through or taking four. But right now you're kind of looking and you're probably trying to figure out where to go from here on the board if you when you add the, these three, because the other one that they've had on official visit, Julia Sims committed to TCU, uh, another official visit, Mark Ihenaker I I uh, from California, it, I would say is probably more of K-State on the outside looking in uh, going forward with him, his, him and his recruitment. So I think that you kind of look at it and you, th you think, okay, we ha already have three. Do we want to go get a fourth? Can we get somebody to camp and make that our fourth? Or do, or do they just sit back and wait and kind of just see how everybody's senior season goes and then prioritize a fourth? Or, or do they just stay content with the three that they have? I mean, cause that, that's another scenario here. Now we've talked a little bit uh, over the course of this is like kind of redemption arcs. It seems in, in terms of what's being done here for some of the K state coaches in their recruiting. Steve standard is a guy that has gotten basically rave reviews from everybody uh, throughout this recruiting process in terms of the players and saying that, Hey, their connection with him was a big reason why they chose K state. Uh, and here, here he goes getting another linebacker in with his crew. So, uh, we talk so much about the guys, and obviously we know that Chris Kleiman and Taylor Bratt and uh, you know Matt Wells and, and Connor Riley are guys that get a lot of love recruiting-wise. But what have you made of Steve Standard in this recruiting class? Yeah, I think that this has been one of Steve Standard's best recruiting cycles because he's been on guys early and has gotten commits early from guys that he really, really likes. So I think that in that sense, he's really – been impressive and i and with a bigger linebacker class you kind of you don't necessarily worry about what's it going to look like because you can find guys still in their senior season but when you can get the guys that you have been going after for a really long time like mcguire richmond like weston polk even sawyer shilke in case they've been recruiting for a while despite his offer only coming recently so i think that you see all of that and you really kind of see Case 8 and Steve Sanders kind of taking that next jump. And I think that some of it has to do with just being in Manhattan for a while and knowing what you like and being in the 335 system for a little bit longer. So you, again, just know what you like and know what you prefer. So I think that that has kind of played a big role because I think Case 8 as a whole in the last two, three years has been so good on the recruiting trail just because they know what they want. And I think that that has kind of been important. And that's where st staff continuity is important. And we've talked about a few times how the receiver coach was such a revolving door that we don't really know what K-State had wanted. But now with uh, Matthew Middleton being at, in Manhattan for over a year now, we kind of see what he wants on the recruiting trail. So I think that just staff continuity has played a big part in this. I think that's been one of the, the reasons why K-State's been so successful under Chris Kleiman, it's not just the staff continuity, but with like what you're saying comes with it. It's they have a pretty refined focus when it comes to recruiting. I mean, we we talk a lot about the percentage of guys they get to come see Manhattan on a, on their official visits that they end up getting 
is a pretty high number. And I think that just goes into they know exactly what they want. They're looking in the right spots. And they know the quality of player and also mindset that they're getting with the guy. You know, that that's sometimes, I think, to people a lost art in college recruiting. But it's still very important. Getting the right type of guy that fits your program, it can go a long way, even if there are some slight deficiencies in terms of athleticism and you know not being that four- or five-star type guy, which we know K-State can also land those. Yeah, I think that you're exactly right with the right mindset. I think that they've kind of really shifted how they want to approach recruiting and I think that they've kind of just nailed it so far. I mean, they're extremely thorough and extremely picky on who they end up offering and who they end up going after and getting on official visits. So I think that you're kind of seeing that the pickiness has worked. And in some cases, I think that there are players where K-State has really kind of turned their heads once they get offered by K-State because they know how hard it is to get an offer from K-State as well. So I think that Everything is just going in a really, really good direction. And again, I say that this this class will probably be in that 12 to 15 commit range by the 4th of July weekend. It, it may be more, but I, I, I would say that's probably in that 12 to 15 range. Certainly seems like they're on the right track there, and they add another player in McGuire, Richmond, another in-state commitment, and it doesn't seem like K-State is done on those yet. Uh, as we know, we're getting close to a very big weekend with uh, some other things going down for K-State football. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. If you want more on the Cats from Drew and D.Y. and certainly not Elliot Voth, head over to On3, find kstateonline.com, keep you in the know with everything going on basketball football-wise. And Drew and I, we're right here every time the Wildcats pick up a commitment, football or basketball. So keep it locked in to KSO. You can subscribe to both. Decided on three and right here on the YouTube page. So we're out of here and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.